Hello, thanks for joining. This time we're gonna paint an ARA with acrylics. This photo is from the website unsplash.com and I put the link in the description so you can download it and you can paint along with me. Uh, first uh, put up the sketch. I, I use a canvas of 30, uh, 40 by 30 centimeters, but of course you can uh, paint on different size if you like. And I have toned my canvas. You don't have to do that, but I like it. I have uh, made it a little bit gray. I have put a layer of gesso on it and, uh, and I've mixed some black acrylic paint through the gesso and then applied it. After that, I've made up the sketch with paint. I like paint, sketching, uh, sketching with paint, but you can also use a pencil or whatever you like. And you can work with a, a grid to uh, put your sketch on. You can do it freehand. You could use a projector. It doesn't matter. Just uh, do what you like most and make a good sketch so that we can start painting. I like starting with the background because we can make a consistent background and um, it doesn't matter if we go a little bit uh, over the sketch lines because we can always paint the ARA on top of our background afterwards. These are my colors, titanium white, uh, ivory black, cat yellow middle and permanent green light. And you can also mix a green yourself because here in the background is a little bit of green, but we don't need that much. I, that is an accident, <laughs> too much green on my palette. A little bit of ultramarine and a little bit of cat yellow light. What strikes us as we look at the background of the photo again is a nice bokeh. Uh, so you have the, the, the detail, the sharpness in the aura and the background is very vague. How do you get that soft? focus effect with paint you see the there aren't that big of contrasts eh, between uh, light and dark in the background it is all fairly the same range and another thing is the colors are muted they're not very saturated so you see a little bit of gr uh, green you see a little bit of a uh, little bit of red a little bit of pink how you call it but it is very desaturated and reasonably light. So they don't fight with each other, these colors. So, this, so you get a very soft focus background. That's what we're gonna try to replicate on our palette. Uh, and, and, and to get this effect, it is easiest when you pre-mix some colors that are already close to each other in, in, in value and in tone. And then you can easily paint wet in wet and you can make the background in one time. So let's start by pre-mixing some colors. I just want to start with some gray because overall ID is a little bit of gray. And I just use a lot of white and a very tiny bit of black to start with. Just try, don't put in too much. And if you want to make a chromatic black, you can do that as well. Some people don't like to use pure black. They like, uh, and then you can, uh, for instance, use burnt umber and ultramarine, uh, for example, to make a nice uh, gray, uh, uh, black color, dark color that you can make gray when you add white. Well, now I have a fairly light gray color. It is a little bit too light for these parts, but for these colors, these light colors, it is a good tonal value. So I'll keep something of this for here. And uh, I'm going to do something with that later on. But now I'm going to make my gray over here a little bit darker. So I just add a little bit extra, <coughs> little bit extra of black. I'll make some more. So like this. Of course, then it gets lighter again because I've added another bit of white. But, but here we go. And pre-mixing with your palette knife, I say it uh, all the time, but it has many benefits. For instance, that all the, the paint lies on your palette and it will not dry that quickly anymore because it's a pile of paint. And another thing is you can wipe it on the back side of your palette knife and you can hold it in front of your photo and you can check if your colors are right. Well, I have a gray here that I can use 
for other parts but it still isn't dark enough and it lacks a bit of, of blue so I just add a little bit of ultramarine something to start with in this case so and when you make a black out of burnt umber and ultramarine blue then you can choose which uh, uh, which color you put in most so if you put in more ultramarine you get a more bluish gray and if you put in more brown more burnt umber then you get a more brown gray now we don't have to match every color exactly but this is a nice color to use for the most part so i'll keep it and for this small part i just want to add a little bit extra of black to make it a little bit more dynamic a little bit more dark uh, to have some yeah a little shift in value and also I want to add a little bit more blue so I just add a little bit more of ultramarine don't know if this is gonna be enough I don't think so but no problem the manufacturers provide us with enough paint luckily so we can go on see it's more a bluish gray and a little bit darker than the other gray like this okay that's uh, that's all right now i'm gonna do something with that lighter value as i said before i wipe my palette knife clean also that's very easy to do it's way more easy to clean your palette knife than your brush your bristles um, now i'm gonna mix a little bit of green um, in this uh, uh, how do you call it light gray um, and well I use so I split it up uh, this one is getting green the other one I will make a little bit pink with a little bit uh, red so now I just take a tiny bit of green and look I make my gray a little bit more colorful oops it's a little bit too much yes these things happen I don't know maybe maybe I'm getting away with it <laughs> uh, for these parts it's okay and then we have lighter parts so I put it there and I put some extra white through it just have a look if this is something I can need well it's good enough and then of course you have even lighter parts like that well i just put it here an extra little bit of white and a tiny tiny bit of that green still in it you see so not really white but a tiny little bit of green maybe slightly more and it may also be a little bit more to the yellow side so i uh, look and i add a little bit of that cadmium ye yellow light but I have to be careful because you change the color very easily with a little bit of cadmium yellow. But like this, I think this is good. I'm gonna have a look. Well, it's okay. Well, well done, Tone. Good so. <laughs> okay, so I have a few colors to choose from when I paint red in red for the background. Oh yeah, and then I'm gonna make another thing for the red, for the pinkish color. So, I have to be careful, a tiny bit of um, cadmium yellow middle. Of course you can also use another red if you don't have cat red, uh, because the cadmium uh, pigments you don't get in the student quality paints and if you use student quality paints there's nothing wrong with that but then you can't buy cadmiums uh, because you only get cadmiums in artist quality paints so um, you could, could use for example pyrrole red this is sort of okay i think i like it when there's a little touch of yellow in it i think it's more true to the color that I see on the photograph. Oh, by the way, that's also a thing. Uh, every printer does another 
prints different. Huh? So maybe the colors in your picture are slightly different. That's no problem. Just keep to the colors you see. That's, I think, the best strategy. And oh yeah, another thing. Of course, you are also free to use completely different colors to put in the background. But the thing is, if you want to be a little bit realistic, then most of the times it's better to stuck at least with the sort of colors that you see in the background. Because the background influences the, 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 the total picture you see is in a certain kind of light and everything is influenced by the same kind of light. And so this is a coherent picture because the background colors match. Yeah, uh, we, we feel that they match how the aura is lit. So if you make, uh, in a, uh, if you would make the background a solid black or something, it's possible, but then your bird is gonna look like it is cut out maybe. And if you put in two vivid colors for example to green uh, and red and that sort of things then maybe it will look a little bit off but you can try it doesn't matter you can try everything okay now we have enough colors to just start and uh, yeah do our job <laughs> i'll make uh, i'll take a fairly big brush it's no use doing this with a very small brush, like this. Then we are still busy tomorrow. Then it takes ages. We wouldn't want that. I'll start with the darkest color and that's over here. A little bit of this. And you don't have to be too precise. But just use what you see a little bit as inspiration. So here are the lighter grays, but also I can add already a little bit of dark gray to just make the light gray go a little bit, uh, make it less, less flat. I mean this. Look, I now take the lighter gray. I put it first alongside the other gray that I already had. So I don't blend it yet. I just let it, uh, I just uh, keep them separated at this stage. See, my aura is a little bit more, I have, um, drawn it a little bit too big for the canvas so i just use colors that i see in the background my background isn't gonna be exactly the same as as what you see there but it's no problem and now i take the lighter um gray for these parts so and don't mind if you go over your sketch your sketch will shine through most of the times so it does uh, my sketch does, does, you see, I can see a little bit through the paint that I put on, I can still see my sketch. And now you see, I just start blending them a little bit, just in the way that I like most. So something like this, maybe I put a little bit of the dark again, wet and wet. I've destroyed the black a little bit too much maybe. Well, you see, that's different than that you would do everything flat with one gray and you get that effect of uh, the the camera that is has a, a focus and the rest is a little bit out of focus and gets a little bit blurry like this and that's enough you don't have to do uh, very much else here maybe some gray just make it wet that is also uh, it's always good because then you can paint wet and wet later on and of course here I'm gonna do th things with uh, green. I will put it on this ridge for now. It's always a big risk of course because when I forget that it is on the ri ridge and I paint a bit too heavy then it might fall off. But okay we're going on, we're going on. I just wipe my brush uh, at the towel like this. The excessive paint I try to get it out of the bristles. Uh, maybe I just uh, make it totally clean. I also do uh, use water. You can hear? I'll do it extra loud so you can hear that I'm using water. Oh, it's such a nice sound, sound effect. Okay, let's continue. We 
go to the next color well maybe that green one and you see in value it is a little bit lighter than this gray but it's still in the vicinity of it so i just add it here and uh, you can do it wherever you like don't uh, don't waste too much time thinking about it and i'll do it here i think like this maybe a little bit here and then i start and then i start blending a little bit like this i have a wet brush and i just go in the gray paint that's still wet same goes for this part you see okay then you can blend it easily and you see that goes very well no problem then i'm gonna go to the next step the even lighter green don't know maybe it isn't necessary to use it but i'll put it here oh, okay maybe i better i had better uh, used the darker green there i don't know but uh, let's uh, do this one this lighter green and blend it a little bit with the darker green and here i want to do just as there uh, leave it here i will put in some lighter green and then quickly we go to the lightest green that i have or, or the almost the lightest green like this and just add it around well around his beak i like it i think this color you see and here a lighter color well as you can see i have to uh, try to bring them closer together now so i'll just wipe off the excessive paint i go to the previous color that darker green and i just blend them together like this you see oops i just uh, made a mistake there just restore with the darker green no problem so blend it a little bit and then here i have to blend it with my gray a little bit more like this and just go over your sketch no problem like that um, what was i doing oh yeah okay here yeah, this is way too hard of course this is let's soften it like this and then you see that i have to do this once more that darker part well you see as long as you paint wet and wet you can do nothing wrong and um, well now i go over there to make that more smoothly just that lighter green from here and a little bit of the darker green let's blend them together so like this okay that's enough I think that's enough for those parts now i will go over here and add some of the uh, pinkish color so like this you see i think that looks nice my composition of course differs from the photo because yeah what i just said i uh zoomed in a little bit more now i just add some extra gray and i just wipe it through each other here like that that's enough and i also do that here no problem it's all wet no problems at all okay what shall i do i think i'm gonna add some of that color here also why not I think I like it to put that here around his beak and then I just uh, I had this on my paintbrush and just I add uh, some of the gray that's there so I have mixed uh, the the colors a little bit together already on my paintbrush and then I wipe them together like this well 
maybe I lighten this up a little bit I add a little bit more gray and of course yeah this is good oh okay now I'm gonna do the same thing with the light green I add this to my gray mixture so I have a little bit of light green and a little bit of gray a little bit of gray and I just add that here so I can do this and you see how easy it goes if you have pre-mixed some colors you can very easily paint wet and wet and you can very easy, easily make that uh, soft focus look here it's not that good I clean my brush because there's, these are light colors and light colors are polluted uh, very very quickly so I just clean it good I just also I make the brush uh, dry good enough I add some of the light color again because it didn't cover that well and then I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of that gray again so like this on my palette and I think it will blend smoothly now you see no problem so you just do something like this no problem uh, something like this i like it that part is good now we have this top part i think what shall i do i think i just add some other uh, more of that green and maybe i add a little bit more yellow this time a, a tiny bit oh that's way too much so i do it like this you know just make some decisions to change what you've got I, I think I like it and maybe after that we go to a little lighter color nearly white maybe for here for only there in the part of the painting but just do what you like yourself you can just play with this paint now I add some gray, you see, to make this smooth. Then I add some more gray, you see. Everybody is so quiet, I don't hear anything. Okay, that's because you are very concentrated, of course, all of you. Oh, I don't like it, I want to make this a little bit more little less uh, yeah th this is better I think I don't know well what shall I do what shall I do maybe I I, I changed my mind it has to be a little bit bigger so I just restore what I had a little bit like this yeah well I think uh, I leave it this way maybe a little bit more like this yep 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 i think that is uh, good now i want to continue with the ara the colors of the ara and we cannot do it all right the first time um, uh, for instance some colors are more opaque than others some colors are more transparent if we're going to use green and uh, uh, cyan for example those colors aren't that opaque so it won't be right right away the first layer so what we're gonna do we make a sort of a wash of colors so that we have a sort of a base color ID uh, well I'll show you uh, first I uh, it's easiest for me to start with the green because you see here this green part uh, I still have enough green on my palette it's uh, not dark enough but I can darken it by adding some ultramarine blue in this instance you see and well it's not quite the right color I can show you by putting it on the edge of a uh, paper you see but maybe when I add a little bit of red then maybe 
we come a little bit close. Oh, it still needs more red. So red to to uh, red lies at the other side of the color wheel uh, as you compare uh, uh, compared to green. So they break each other down. But watch this. This isn't exactly the right color, but it comes a little bit close. Uh, I just put it in the place where I see that it needs to be put. And I don't mind all the details yet. So I just put this in as a base color layer. And you see, it is a little bit transparent. And that's what I mean. We couldn't do it right uh, anyway, the first layer. So that's why I do this. I add a little bit of black now and try to do this wet and wet to make it a little bit darker here. Maybe it's gonna work, maybe not. And also here the underneath. So yeah, you see wet and wet with transparent colors is a little bit diff difficult, but okay, you get the idea. We leave it like this. That's the next time when this is completely dry, then we can do refinements. Same goes for the cyan. And I have to fetch the cyan. It's become a crazy mess on my palette. I don't mind. Next time I use my glass palette again, because I don't like working on a white palette. <coughs> it's a little bit blinding. You, don't can, you cannot see the colors that good. But in this case I don't mind, because we don't have to be so precise yet about the colors. So same story with the cyan. Cyan is also uh, a reasonably transparent color. And uh, oh yeah, why do I choose cyan? Because this kind of blue, it's reasonably neutral blue. It isn't purplish and it isn't greenish. So it's a little in between. Uh, so I think cyan is a good, uh, a good choice for this. You see, it's a little bit uh, too... Uh, too intense. Well, let's add a little bit of red here as well to tone it down a little bit. Also, red lies far away from cyan on the color wheel. So, and I add some white. You see, that's reasonably okay. And now I'm just gonna, uh, well, uh, put it on the right spots. Uh, more or less, I hope. <laughs> it's always the question. Uh, you see? And again, okay, this is getting more purple. Maybe it could use a little bit of magenta in it, but I don't care. That's for next time. This is our base layer. And the reason that the background layer worked right away the first time, and we don't have to go over the background anymore, that's because we used a lot of titanium white in the background. And titanium white is a very opaque color. Here we have this wing, like this. And at the inside it is yellow or something like burnt sienna to be uh, precise but uh, oh, it, it's a shadow color of yellow and here also we have this color this uh, cyan and maybe i can try with a little bit of red and a little bit more pure cyan just to make a more shadowy color but I think it's maybe, well, it's not uh, that big of a problem, do you see? So I add a little, added a little bit of red to the cyan and we can make it here a little bit more 3D. Maybe we can do it there as well already. Uh, we don't have to be too precise, but for next time it is easy that we don't get lost in our painting. So like this, that's enough, I think. See? So it will become a very flat 
Ara because these colors they don't change that much it's just a little bit flat I clean my brush again now I want to uh, do the what, what shall we do the yellow why don't we do the yellow well I have get uh, yellow light that isn't maybe the best choice I will try with cat yellow medium and then cat yellow medium is a little bit more orangey see this one is a bit different yellow this is a cadmium yet yellow light looks more like primary yellow and uh, this is a little bit more uh, orange to orange and I see that here as well in the feathers of the parrot of the ara so I take a little bit of cadmium yellow uh, middle but look it's not orange enough so we add a little bit of cat red cadmium red middle so we get a more orangey uh, yellow even more we don't have again we don't have to be too exact but like this is good oh, maybe still even more see like this and cat yellow and cat red cadmium red and cadmium yellow are pigments that are very opaque but still I just choose to do well maybe not I'm, I'm not sure maybe I just uh, add some refinements to it uh, so for instance now here you see it can use a little bit extra red so I just mix it through here and I try to put it in wet and wet you see like this that's that's fine I think it could be toned down a little bit more it's a little bit exaggerated maybe and here it gets even more orange and well also a little bit toned down how do we do that we can take that orangey color we make cat red and cat yellow we make it a little bit orange like this see and then we just add a tiny amount of um, cyan and that way we get a duller orange because this is more a sort of an, an, uh, it's a shadow color of yellow of course and it's a little bit more orange in this case and here it gets even more orangey so again extra red and, and a little bit of cyan I think because otherwise it is a very intense color well maybe still even more to tone it a little bit down so it's more a brownish orangey color like this you see well that's enough for that part but the same color we can put in the inside of his wing so notice that it gets very brown uh, it's a sort uh, it, to be uh, precise it's almost burnt sienna the color that you can buy in a tube okay so I, uh, some places here I also add a little bit of that well then I make the color a little bit lighter some parts here and then so I add more yellow compared to the the color that I used before it's still a little bit orangey but way less you see like this and from here we can go on and make it a little bit more orange again 
So I just put orange on my brush. See? Like this, and here we let go. That's enough for the base layer of the, well, maybe not, maybe I can add a little bit more of pure yellow over here, you see. And when you, you but when you use uh, uh, student quality, primary yellow, for example, you don't get the coverage that you see uh, in my uh, painting. Then you do exactly the same as what I did with the cyan. So you just... Uh, put on a base layer that you can adjust at a later stage so don't mind if it looks very strange that's almost always the case in the beginning of your painting and that's just because some colors don't cover right the first time that that's just how it is i want to dull this a little bit more down i don't think no i'm not satisfied a little bit of ultramarine maybe it's a little bit darker blue make it more in the direction of green yeah i think that's a little bit better okay i just leave it now and now i will go on with another color i clean my brush See, everything looks very strange now. That's normal. In the first place, it looks strange because I painted it. <laughs> but in the second place, it is because we haven't covered everything. We haven't covered every part of the painting yet. So it looks very weird. Let's put in a reasonably dark part, uh, the darkest parts from, for the beak. Uh, well, I use a smaller round brush this time and I just take some black, nearly black. I have added a little bit of, of white and I will add a little bit of ultramarine. So make it slightly lighter and slightly yeah, ultramarine-ish. <laughs> How do you call it? A dark, very dark color, but not necessarily black see so like this but this is when you look at the photograph you can ask yourself where do i see without a doubt the darkest colors well it is here in his uh, pupil and uh, these these lines are reasonably dark here is a very dark part and here and here maybe a little bit well let's do it who cares just add some of these things but just before it bends away it gets a little bit lighter so I just leave a little space there and here it gets smaller I think when I look correctly I think it goes something like this that's the darkest part on his beak I think and then we here have also a dark part but that there I add a little bit of red and a little bit of that uh, ultramarine again so we get a little bit a purplish effect because it looks a little bit dark purple there so you see so it looks like a, just a dark color but it's the same with every color, but uh, a dark color isn't of course always just black. It can contain a lot of colors. So that are the darkest parts, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm uh, going to continue to, well, maybe here. And for that part, I can go to a bigger brush. I just take some black and it has some green in it. So I just mix some of my uh, permanent green through the black to give it a little bit of that br the greenish tone it's easy way you can also add of course a blue and yellow to your black if you need 
but uh, then I have a very very dark green because that's what I see and I go to the darkest places first so I just put them in like this with a big brush again no need to do this with a small brush you can do this easily with a big brush it's no problem so like this and over here it gets a little bit more green a little bit lighter so I just add a little bit more green then my dark gets lighter automatically and here with the small hairs I just look at the big shapes first I just do it like this and I just leave it I just try to put in the big shapes I don't mind all these little details all these feathers and etc just put it in like this I um, have to look well it's a little bit more like this oh I see so like this here a little bit and here a little bit like this well you see well I told you beforehand it's gonna look very flat and you see that here again but no problem uh, with a little experience you will know that uh, it will uh, will will come with a little experience you know that everything will uh, gonna look uh, better when you just uh, when you continue and uh, now I like to take my palette in my hand because only thing I'm gonna do now is put in nearly dark I just use a small pencil a small brush and I make it slightly lighter and then I'm gonna do some precision work I just add dark color to this parts And well, for most parts, where, where my sketch is going to is disappearing a little bit, so I just want to get it back. That's why I do that. And these aren't the correct colors, but I don't mind that because, for instance, here I have to go lighter, but I can do that later on. I put that on top, but I want a dark, a dark lines because. I'm gonna go over it with white paint, nearly white paint, and then these dark lines will shine through. Maybe it was better uh, that I, uh, sh I should have done this uh, earlier in the process, then it would already have been dry, but okay. So some of these things, I don't have to do everything, but most of these things I just want to put in you see just get it covered Okay, and this uh, is also very dark, of course. I just added uh, with, with a little bit of black, but I can change that later on if I don't want to have it black. So that was that. So now I can continue with the beak. And maybe it's good to uh, use a uh, big brush but not that big so I go to an another sized and when you look I see some dark purplish color name uh, mainly so I just get my black again I make it a little bit lighter with that gray that I have over there doesn't matter which color but that's it and then 
I'm gonna add a little bit more of ultramarine blue. Because ultramarine blue is, has already a little bit red in it, it is already a little bit a purplish blue, then I can easily adjust it with another bit of red so that it has a bias towards purple, this, this dark color, you see? I don't know if you can see it that clearly. Maybe I should make it a li slightly lighter, who cares? We can do darker parts later on as well, always, there's no problem. So like this, a little bit more ultramarine as well. Okay, here we go. And again, I just put in base color. Although this is a more covering uh, color, of course, it's black, but I just want to do that the next time, the rest. So also, uh, it's, it's often it's good practice to just lay in base colors then take rest and uh, next day go on with other things. Here I make it slightly lighter. Um, yep, go here, around here. Yeah, let's make it solid, a solid color. Can also adjust everything. See, like this. Also, I go around that dark color that I had there already. And as I said before, I left that a little bit open for a lighter value. So, like this. These go into each other, so that's good. Yeah. Then, last but not least, oh, uh, we'll do that uh, shortly because this isn't dry completely. I just put in a base color for the eye and the pupil, I leave it like that. But the eye, it uh, has a little bit of this, to be honest, I think. Yeah, a little bit more yellow. So, don't know exactly. This is more like it, I think. Also, this is all just base colors. Don't mind if it's not good. See, just put it in like this. Then around that you get a gray color. Well, maybe something like this. Uh, it's more, it contains more blue it's more a bluish gray yeah i think like this yeah my the the that the yellow color that i put around it is a little bit too uh, saturated i think but okay <laughs> something for next time no problem and then uh, well we can do the white color and well I'm gonna start with this darker part because we all experience this as white we think this is white but where is it really white it is almost never really pure white if you compare it to that white paper you see so it is a sort of gray, a very light gray. This part is the darkest end here. 
So I start with that one. That is a little bit, well, maybe a little bit of that color that I had already here. So a gray with a little bit of red through it. Well, that's a little bit not dark enough. So I add a little bit more black and I add a little bit more red just to look what we get. And okay, it's it can also use a little bit of ultramarine. And if you're not sure, just put out the paper and do like this. Well, it's almost good. A little touch of red still, like this. Okay. Mm. Yeah. There we go. I just put it in. And again, it's a base color. We can adjust it. I can always, uh, I keep telling that because I know a lot of people uh, stop painting in this stage because this is sort of the ugly face of painting. Here I make it slightly darker. So they think, oh no, this is never gonna work out. It is way too, uh, it, it doesn't look uh, like, uh, a, like it's gonna happen. That it's gonna work. And, uh, but that's, they think it's not going to work out. It's con not going to work, but, uh, you have to continue after this moment, after this ugly face, you most of the time need hardly anything to make it look good. It's very small adjustments that you need to make it look good. Well, I can use that darker color for here. In ex oh, okay, I messed up here. Uh, this is also a darker color. And here I completely forgot a part. A little bit more blue. Well, maybe I uh, left it out because I wanted to paint in this with more blue. You see, lighter and I've added more blue. That's, uh, that's all right. Now, before I start doing any uh, anything, I, I, before I go to the other white colors, I want to add that reflected color, that bluish color. So a little bit of sign and a little bit of ultramarine. I put uh, a mix. And I just, I think this is good enough. I just add it here like this. Looks a bit strange. Make it a little bit darker and a little bit more ultramarine like this. So it's just, uh, it is white, but a reflected color in his, it's a reflected, reflected color. And of his blue feathers, I think. And you just put it in like this. That's enough. Okay. Now I'm gonna focus on the white, but I will do that with a global color again. Uh, so I take a smaller round brush. I just get a little bit of this white and a little bit of black through it. So it's a little bit of a dirty white. And now I'm gonna look, well, maybe I make it even more gray, a little bit more gray. So you see, uh, this is for here, this is reasonably good value. And, and, and then it even it can be made even more dark. I mix some gray through the white to make it a little bit more dark like this. And that's reasonably good, you see. And for there, it has to be more even more dark, but well, just let's put on this color first. We can always go uh, do the other things. And first I said I would go over my sketch, but now I've changed my mind. I just block it in reasonably uh, thick. So, and here, okay, I missed my sketch lines there, but that's not a problem, I can easily put them in again. So like this, that's that, that color. But here it turns a little bit towards that 
blue color again so like this I just add a little bit of that to my mixture and then I do it like this to merge them together here you see it get merged a little bit and then I do something like this a bit so because it is all a bit how do you call it wrinkly <laughs> so you don't have to do it very smooth that's what I wanted to to say in fact so like this you see that's uh, starting to work then uh, I go over to these parts maybe here okay look I can just add a little bit of that darker and a little bit more ultramarine in it because this is a little bit more darker and a little bit more ultramarine I don't mind too much if I go over my sketch over these patterns these uh, yeah these patterns because I know where they are a little bit and I can uh, easily uh, get them back next time so you see that's no problem but I wanted to have a little bit of uh, something to hold on to so that I can see still can uh, still can see those lines I like that so uh, I don't get lost completely so that's that and here it gets a little bit more uh, I, it contains a little bit more red so this, this mixture that gray with a little bit more red I add here in these zones around his eyes see it's a, just slightly but it is there so like this and this okay I think that's enough here it gets more neutral a little bit more blue again and a little bit lighter like this okay see here also a little bit blue like this well uh, let's have a look let's step backwards and have a look from farther be farther away yeah okay that's good enough one thing I forgot is the dark part here and then we'll stop for today well this is a very dark blue color I think I just get some ultramarine and ivory black I mix them together just make a very dark blue and a little bit of white that it isn't completely black just oh well just like this there is a feather here it goes like that maybe it's a little bit too dark already well here I need a slightly more precise brush for that small par part there here as well there's a dark feather and here dark part well like this maybe okay the rest is a little bit less precision work so I'll step over to the larger brush like this I think yeah and in the end we see a little bit of cyan again it's oh that's way too uh, I put some uh, ultramarine through it to make it a more uh, a little bit oh, even more just add a little bit of ultramarine to make it more of that purple blue 
so to speak. So, like that. Okay. So, we have base colors. It looks flat. It looks ugly. That's no problem. With a, with a few adjustments next time, when it's completely dry, you will see that it will come to life. It will become a three-dimensional bird. But, for now, uh, let's have some sleep. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.